Before calculus begins, all you need to know about inverse trig is what the functions are, what they mean, and where they are defined. Now, for example, arc sine is the inverse of sine. What this means is if we have sine of x is equal to 1, then arc sine of 1 is equal to x. It just gives you whatever you want to find. If you take sine of pi over 2 equals 1, then arc sine of 1 is pi over 2. So that's all you're doing with arc sine. It is the inverse of sine. Now because the range of sine is from negative 1 to 1, that means that the domain of arc sine is from negative 1 to 1. Our cosine is the inverse of cosine, and it exists from negative 1 to 1. Arctangent is the inverse of tangent, and that exists for all real numbers. Likewise, arc cotangent is the inverse of cotangent, and that is also existent for all real numbers. That's the domain there. Arc secant exists when x is less than or equal to negative 1 or when x is greater than or equal to 1 and arc cosecant as well. That's really all you need to know about the inverse trig functions. On the AP Calc AB exam they will not make you actually find values of inverse functions. Rather you will have to know the derivatives of inverse trig functions which surprisingly have nothing to do with trig. So that's actually kind of nice. But you do need to know what they are, where they come from, and where they are defined.